yet another uh, video class session and I am very happy that my previous videos on final CA final has been well appreciated. Lot of WhatsApp messages and calls are coming into it and few recommendations were there that was one is the merger chapter which already been telecasted through webcast and of course uh, now it is available in the YouTube. And another such very important topic which was requested by few students not only from India but also from abroad also uh, is about winding up chapter which is very important for CA final and again students a little bit reluctant to study that chapter because of the volume and of course because of the complexities you know coming from IBC and few students has got confusion about difference between winding up and provisions and IBC and all. So I thought that I will have a calm video today, class today, so that you will get into uh, the, the pace of the you know syllabus. And I would advise that you should not leave any chapter in CA final, corporate law, even in economic laws, because you have to study all chapters. Then only you can target 65 plus for CA final, because uh, you know that. Studying every chapter is very important for your aggregate purpose, your rank purpose and your you know 65 plus target. So what I would advise you to how you should learn uh, winding up is it's a highly volume chapter. So if you are not confident about that chapter then it is better to study at least selected areas so that you will not lose any mark and even though something happens to your main you know questions. You can at least write you know the, the surrounding answers so that at least you can score some penny marks in that question. So we'll go. Winding up is a very important chapter and the understanding the concept is very important too. So we'll start by understanding the concept. Many students does not clearly understand the difference between the terms winding up liquidation and dissolution. See my dear students these three terms is usually interchangeably used in study purpose but practically legal point of view these three terms that is winding up, liquidation and dissolution denotes three stages of ending the life of a company. As you know that a company is created by law and the company's life can be ended only by the fiction of law. And that legal fiction is whole called as winding up process and it starts by filing a petition called winding up and you can't file a liquidation or dissolution petition usually we file a petition called winding up. So that means winding up is the starting process it's the starting stage of ending the life of a company. Once the winding up petition is accepted by the court or by the tribunal it enters into the second stage called liquidation by appointing the liquidator either a provisional liquidator company liquidator or an official liquidator you know that and liquidation is basically the second part or the second process of ending the life of the company the liquidation passes in liquidation it itself passes through three stages apart from the procedural law reports you know contributory list etc etc liquidation passes through essentially three stages the first stage is collecting the debt or collecting the debtors or selling the assets of the company so that money will come into the bank account of the liquidator. And the second stage is settling the liabilities on the preferential basis and you know by this process the money will go out from the bank. And the first stage and second stage is over the third stage will be distribution of surplus if any and that surplus will be distributed to the preference shareholders and later on if available to the residual or ordinary shareholders called equity shareholders. Thus liquidation is passing through three stages collecting debts, selling assets, second one is distributing the, 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 the amount to the creditors and settling the liabilities and lastly if there is any surplus that is being distributed to the shareholders of the company. So that whole process will take number of years to complete if it is a solvent company and that is the liquidation stage. Now coming to the third stage called as dissolution. Dissolution even though the term is usually used in partnership in companies act also we have a definite term called dissolution which is the final stage of putting the end to the life of the company. 
Thus, by dissolution, the life of the company will end and you know the legal status of the company will come to an end by the fiction of the law. Thus, students, the whole winding up process is divided into three categories. The first stage is called obviously winding up. Second stage is ended into liquidation. And third stage, it ends into called dissolution. Now, the legal provisions of the Companies Act 2013 for CA final exam purpose is divided into two parts. One is section 271 to 303 and 324 to 358. I request my students, especially students who file this, who finds this chapter to be difficult to study, to at least study the selected area so that you will understand the crux and the real game of winding up. So it's my responsibility now to move to the further areas. Students, this slide will speak you the basic concept of difference between winding up under Companies Act 2013 and the newly invented Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code 2016. Many students have a confusion about these two laws. Fundamentally, students should understand winding up of company and IBC. You should go back to the 1956 law where there were three modes of winding up. One is voluntary winding up, second one is compulsory winding up and third one is supervisory winding up. Students, when the new law came in the 2013 and when the new law came in 2016 by the advent of the IBC, you must understand now the voluntary winding up which was already in the 1956 law has gone through IBC. And there is no supervisory winding up. There is only one winding up in company side that is called compulsory winding up. I will repeat again, there were three, there was three types of winding up, voluntary winding up, compulsory winding up and supervisory winding up. When coming into the new law in 2013 by the Companies Act and in 2016 by the IBC, there is no supervisory winding up. There is only two types of winding up. One is the voluntary winding up and second one is the compulsory winding up. Voluntary winding up is now parked in the IBC and compulsory winding up is now parked in the company Act. So whatever you study the winding up in the company Act chapter, mind you that you are studying about compulsory winding up and not about voluntary winding up because voluntary winding up is now under the ambit of the IBC. Another difference between winding up in the company Act and winding up into the IBC or the liquidation of the IBC is in winding up basically you know the, the law takes into the hand because law is law makes catch you the company in most of circumstances and take the company into the winding up state. In IBC, it's basically apart from the fiction of law, it's the act of party. Because in IBC, either in the case of insolvency also you can go and in the case of solvency also you can go. In IBC, the liquidation has two sources. One, the company is insolvent, unable to pay debt. The second one is company is even solvent. But even though insolvent companies can go through IBC under the category of voluntary wind, voluntary liquidation. So this is the concept. IBC, you know, the corporate insolvency resolution process have two sources. The company is insolvent, that is unable to pay debt. Second one is company is solvent, but in solvent case, that takes the form of voluntary liquidation. So these are the overall concept of the concept of difference between winding up and IBC. Any confusion, it please please ask me through my you know you know the contact details. I will repeat again. Winding up and IBC ultimately ends up in the concept of a resolution process and ultimately if it is not viable it ends up into a liquidation process. But winding up mostly this is a compulsory winding up and that is the fiction of law by the court by the honorable tribunal. But in the case of IBC it is basically the fiction of people, fiction of party but it has two sources. One it may be an insolvent company or it may be even a solvent company. So that ends the magic. Now we go to the provision wise discussion. I remind you that this video will be two parts due to you know the, the, the time limit which we have uh, you know to each session to have the focused way. So don't forget to you know complete to take the two classes because mostly students attend one class and wind up and second class or they take the part two. But for students purpose it's important that you take both the parts at together in any of my video not only my video any of my you know colleagues video. Now study plan one the crux of winding up starts from section 271 which speaks about circumstances in which a company may be wound up by the tribunal. Now don't even remember about IBC because we are not at all talking about voluntary winding up because voluntary winding up is part of IBC. We whole topic which we discuss in winding up in company set for your syllabus is compulsory winding up. So what are the grounds of compulsory winding up under section 271? This is a very important section you have to study. Basically the grounds a little bit I will explain is the company passes a special resolution 
or it affects the integrity and sovereignty of india it, the company does fraudulent activity the company's uh, analyst financial statement is pending non filing for 5 years and of course just and equitable ground i request students to study 271 detail because 271 speaks about the grounds of compulsory winding up now moving to section 272 we speaks about who can file a petition for winding up the company can file a petition the contributor can file a petition the government can file a petition roc or central government so these are the persons who can file a petition under section 272 early you know the creditors can also file a petition now the creditors filing petition is part under ibs section 273 speaks about the power of tribunal while a petition is filed under section 271 by fiction of 271 under section 272 section 273 speaks about the power of tribunal it, it may dismiss the application it may accept an application it may issue an interim order it may appoint a provisional liquidator it may issue you know final order by appointing company liquidator that you have to study in detail then miscellaneous section 274 speaks about filing of statement of affairs then 275 speaks about company liquidator and their appointment so in this slide the most important section you have to study is 271 and 272 coming to second slide study plan 2 the the miscellaneous areas are 276 279 281 just read through that section so it's that not that which is not that much important but very important section is 285 read with section 2 plus 26 which deals with contributory a question may arise from this area so every student of cf students of ca final must master this section 285 read with section 2 plus 26 which defines the term contributor who is a contributory members of the company who have to contribute to the assets of the company like you know pending call money call senior everything is if the spending the obviously the liquidator will first catch the members of the company and that members of the company are called as contributory at the time of winding up once winding up it is declared once winding up order is issued all the members of the company will called as contributory and they are divided into two category one is list a and second one is list b list a are current members and list b are past members within a period of back within a period of one year so mind you this area is very very important liquid you know contributory area section 285 you must understand the con who are contributory who is a contributory list a contributors and list b contributors mind you the liquidator will first first ask money only from the current members that is from the past list a and if the money is not enough then it will cash the list b members who are the past members preceding one years coming to the third way that much not important but you have to read section 287 which is about advisory committee and next section 290 is very 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 important section for exam point of view that deals with powers and duties of company liquidator mostly one exam one question may be asked in the exam point of view so what are the powers of company liquidator the company liquidator have a plethora of you know you know you know powers which is very important for practical and exam point of view i will go into the words i view selling of assets of the company paying creditors carrying the business for the purpose of winding up raising loans executing negotiable instruments executing deeds on behalf of the company handling legal cases inspecting the mca records for further further matters seeking professional help and advice from the you know for example from the receivers from company secretaries from the legal advisors from the you know survivors and loss assessors even can recover from insolvent and debt contributories through their you know debt contributories through their legal representative so this slide is very important for exam point of view section 290 don't forget we speaks about the powers and duties of company liquidator this from this slide i will i will i will continue in the in the in the next video so i will i will, I will go into back what are the important areas again in the, my first video so the main important chapter you know the areas is section 271 circumstances of compulsory winding up and section 273 powers of tribunal and section 272 which speaks about you know who can file a petition in my second slide it's very important section 285 which speaks everything about a contributory very 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 important area for example of you and my third slide is very important section 290 which speaks about the powers and duties of company liquidator very very important company liquidator's powers and duties the left part i will be dealing in my second video thank you